Hi golfers, Nick here for Nick Taylor Golf. It's Friday, so welcome to another lesson on golf tips. This week on golf tips, I'm gonna debunk five of the biggest myths on the Stack and Tilt Golf Swing. I started my channel five years ago and the whole purpose of doing this channel was to let you guys know out there what Stack and Tilt is, um, how it can work for you and how the best players in the world are using the system. Over the years, there's been a lot of pushback from the system, a lot of people call it a method. Um, and in today's video, I'm gonna sort of cover five of the biggest ones that I get um, to help you guys understand the system a lot more and hopefully answer a lot of your questions out there. So the first myth we're gonna debunk today is the method of stack and tilt. People think it's a method that you have to swing the same swing, everyone swings the same swing. That's the whole idea, we're teaching you to just swing one swing. And that couldn't be further from the truth. We know, we take a look at the best golfers, they all have different swings, but they all conform to certain key fundamentals and that's what Stack and Tilt is based around. So the system's based around three key fundamentals to play good golf. And it's not just the players we teach to do this, it's also the best players in the world conform to these key fundamentals. The difference between sort of the conventional golf swing and the Stack and Tilt golf swing is the fact that we use a set of dynamic fundamentals as opposed to some static fundamentals. A lot of people believe the, the grip, the way you stand, your posture, your alignment is a fundamental where really the best players do those things all differently. So in the stack and tilt system we use uh, key fundamentals that help you play better based upon the best players in the world. So the first one is controlling the low point of the swing. So what do I mean by the low point of the swing? Well, if I put my club on this mat here, as I swing, I will hit in front of where the club starts, and that's controlling the low point. We know that the best players in the world, they hit down on the golf ball and they control that dispersion of where the club hits the ground really tightly. The highest handicappers have the biggest range of variance of where their club hits the ground. So generally, the highest handicappers that I see uh, around the world and in the bay here, they'll hit the furthest behind the ball or well, they will probably miss hit the ground or their dispersion of where the club hits the ground varies a lot. Whereas the best players have the tightest dispersion. So that's the first key fundamental, being able to control where the club hits the ground. So once you can control where the club hits the ground, then you need to do that speed. There's no point chipping the golf ball around the course because you're not going to get very far. Even though you might control the low point, you need to have some sort of degree of speed in that. So at the same time as controlling the contacts and the low point, we have to start to build a golf swing that creates power. So this is why we have this grid here. This is to help with a, a number of things, but it's also to help add power into the stroke. Go in the golf swing, a lot of players are led to believe you have to sway the body to create power. But in the second tilt golf swing, we, we tilt and turn and extend to help us move the club around the body in an arc to keep the club on plane, uh, to create power and control the contact. So in the second tilt golf swing, by moving the hands and the club around the body, that's beginning to create power. And by tilting and turning, that's given us some leverage in the swing to help us turn and move the arm around to create power, as opposed to moving off the golf ball. You could move off the golf ball to create power. Um, certainly, if I moved around the most, it could probably create a little bit more speed, but at the same time, that's not going to control my contacts on my low point of the swing. So you have to conform to those first two key fundamentals first before you worry about the controlling the curve of the ball, which is the third key fundamental. So when you take a look at the best players on the PGA Tour week in, week out, they always make a contact, they hit the ball a long way. They don't always control the curve of the ball, which is the third key fundamental of the stack and tilt golf swing. So first of all, you have to get those first two right. And this is where I spend most of my time with the highest handicappers is controlling the contact improving the power at the same time because if you can do that you can at least get around the golf course uh, hit the ball a certain distance control the distance you've got more chance of scoring there's no point trying to hit everything straight if you can't make good contacts and hit the ball a long way so when we talk about the curve of the ball we're talking about how the best players control the starting direction and the direction it curves so this is where the grid comes in moving the club around the body back and through helps control the swing plane helps control the low point and starts to control the curve of the ball. I know by placing the ball in a certain position in my stance, it's gonna change my delivery of the club into the ball. 
And this is a, a big misunderstanding of the stack and tilt goal swing. Players believe, a lot of people believe in that we're trying to swing the most into out, which is, couldn't be further from the truth. We're actually swinging at the target, but by having the ball back in the stance, you catch the ball before that point where the club changes direction. I've done loads of videos on the grid talking about that, but we're not trying to deliberately draw every golf ball, it's built into the, to the grid, right? That's the whole point. We're making good contact, we're creating power, and we, the draw is natural because of the way we stand and set up to the golf ball. So going back to the earlier point there, it's a system to improve based on three key fundamentals that are more dynamic as opposed to what you just do at setup. And I think that's so key to understand. I think people think that when they come for lessons or they're learning stack and tilt that we're gonna transform you and get you to swing exactly like the model swing. It's, it's not like that at all. We use those three key fundamentals to help you improve um, in a more structured way, in a systematic way, as opposed to trying to change everything at once. We first of all just focus on making good contact, creating power, then once we can do that, then we start to try and control the curve of the ball a lot more. In my experience, generally the better players, you're trying to work more on controlling the curve, but as you start out and you progress, generally at the beginning, you're gonna focus more on the contact and the power, which I think is so important to improve your golf. The second myth we're gonna talk about is the driver, and people believe that with a stack and tilt golf swing, you can't hit driver, because you can't hit down on it, where it couldn't be further from the truth, so. This is my standard swing using the driver here and the stack and tilt goal swing. So you can see on the screen there, pretty straight. Now, I've not had a warm up. That's really my first swing of the day. Sort of just gone out there to almost 300 yards. Pretty straight. So yeah, no warm up, just stand up there, hit the ball pretty straight using the stack and tilt goal swing. Take a look at the club data there. The club path was 0 0.7 degrees into out, and I hit 1.5 degrees upward. So just in my standard golf swing, I actually hit slightly up on the ball, and I think where you guys sort of misinterpret stack and tilt is that in the swing, by keeping the weight forward, with the driver, we, we have to set up slightly differently. So we create a slight side tilt by pushing our hips forward, like this, this creates this side tilt. And then it, through impacts, we extend, push our hips forward, bend backwards to shallow that out. I think a lot of people think you, with the driver, you push your weight to the left, keep it there, and then you hit down on it too much. And yeah, you're right, if you do that, you're doing it wrong. So in the stack and tilt goal swing, you have to learn how to extend properly, bend backwards, set up properly, that's key as well. So I think there's certainly a lot of misinterpretations there on how you use the driver. Um, I've done plenty of videos on this describing it, but just showed you there guys, you can hit driver using a stack and tilt golf swing, it goes a long way, and it's pretty straight. Another big myth is um, stack and tilt's bad for your back, and I think over the years people have sort of read the Golf Digest article, they've seen the pictures of Aaron Badley, and they're kind of trying to interpret what you have to do in the stack and tilt golf swing. And I think they either overdo things, or they don't do it in the right way, they're not using an authorised instructor to help them improve. There's certainly a lot of studies that have gone into this and uh, the facts are, guys, that there hasn't been one uh, stack and tilt tour player that's had to pull out of an event because of injury. In fact, it's probably the most friendly way of swinging the golf club. All the motions and the movements in the stack and tilt system are to help take stress off the body. One of the key things is setup, And I see this every day, I must tell, Sometimes I tell people every lesson to turn their feet out and I think it's one of the most important things when you set up to the golf ball, turn your feet and your knees out. That already opens up your ankles, your knees and your hips to rotate. If you have your feet square and turned in, you're restricting your movements. It's a lot harder to turn and it puts more stress on the body. So the movements in stack and tilt are basically learning how to extend. So extending is if you bend forward, and backwards, if you can do that, if you can do this movement, you can extend in the golf swing. Uh, if you can move and tilt this way, left and right, then you can tilt and bend in the golf swing, and that's two of the key movements. And then finally, you have to learn how to do that and rotate. So as long as you can tilt and bend, then you can do the moves, right? In the golf swing, the stack and tilt golf swing, we, we help you turn better by 
extending the legs, changing the knee flex, tilting and turning and bending to create the backswing. Right? We're not trying to restrict the movements here by maintaining too much bend in the right leg, trying to squat into that leg. We're not trying to have our feet square and put strain on the body. A uh, good video to watch for this. Uh, my colleague here, uh, Rob Cheney, I know a lot of you guys follow him. Check out his video he did on this a few weeks ago. Um, he explains it a lot better than I do, but really all the moves in the stack and tilt system all the movements we prescribe you to do are within the body's range of motion and it's actually a safer way to swing the golf club. The fourth myth here we're going to discuss to debunk is the theory that stack and tilt doesn't work for that individual. I think this is a very common question. People believe that because it's slightly different to maybe the conventional way of coaching that it either works for them or it doesn't or I'm a natural stack and tilt player. I get that a lot and really it's not really a fact of being a natural stack and tilt player, it's knowing what parts of the system you need to use to get better. And that's why it's so important that you do work with an authorised instructor because they can really help guide you along the way. Just trying to do something or trying to feel something, uh, maybe not, it might not be the right thing for you to do at that particular time. Even though you've been told to put your weight on the left, you might be doing it too much, you might not be doing it enough. You need to be guided along the way and that's really important. So the question for you guys out there would be to, if you wanted to make solid contact, right? you would start off with a chip shot, you'd put your weight on the left, put your hands forward and chip the ball. And you've got more chance of making solid contact with a chip shot. So why would you move into a full swing and start to try and shift the weight around in the pretense of trying to create power? It's just, for me, it just doesn't make sense. I think you have to, first of all, control the contacts and the power. And this leads back to the key fundamental things. It's not about trying to completely change your goal swing. You have to do it in a structured way. And this is why it's important to work with an instructor and work on it over a period of time. I have too many golfers that give up too easily because they think it doesn't work for them or their friends told them that it doesn't work for them. And all of those are just complete rubbish. So if you're practicing, I would always start off with your low point control. If you're struggling with your contact, try and work on low point. And if you can start off by pushing your weight to the left, having your hands forward and start to hit balls, pushing your weight forward, extending backwards, keeping your arms straight, you're going to make better contact. And that's where you start. You have to start off with smaller swings and gradually build up if you're trying to learn something new completely trying to change your whole swing in one go is unrealistic. I work with a lot of students and we work on kind of building up the swing, um, starting off with smaller shots, just building on that because when you're trying to change something, when you're trying to hit the ground more consistently in the same spot, just trying to do your full swing all the time is can be unrealistic to change. So in my opinion, I think stack and tilt works for everyone. And I think it's a complete myth to say that you are either a stack and tilt player or you're not. So the final myth we're gonna discuss now is that no one uses it. And I get this comment a lot. No one uses stack and tilt, so it doesn't work. No one on the PGA Tour uses it, so it doesn't work. So first of all, I'm not sure where they're getting the facts from because there are players that do use it on the PGA Tour. Um, one thing I'd also say is that it's had a number of wins over the years. Um, more so sort of 10, 15 years ago. And I think that's where people think that it's died off because the stack and tilt players aren't now winning every week. However, what I would say, a lot of the top instructors out there that do work on the tour, the majority of them have gone through the stack and tilt training program. So even though they might not say, I am a stack and tilt golf coach, because I think that puts people off um, and that's up to them if they want to do that. They are, have gone through the training and they have got players that they work with on tour, uh, big name players. So I think just because they don't say they're stack and tilt doesn't mean that they don't use the system as such or use many parts of it. And I think that's the beauty of stack and tilt. You don't have to necessarily conform to the model goal swing at every point, but you can certainly use certain aspects of that to improve your golf. I get a lot of comments from you guys out there that say, oh, um, I don't completely do the stack and tilt goal swing or what they, think that, what they think that is, but they do certain aspects of that and incorporate it into their swing, which is great. I think a lot of people uh, think they do stack and tilt with the irons but not with the driver and we've talked about that before. So I think it's important to note there are a number of top players out there using the system but they might not advertise that they do that. Also I would say the Mike and Andy had a lot of success when they were working frequently on tour and they don't do that as much anymore. 
even though they do still work with some players that play on the PJ Tour. What I would say, guys, is there's certainly an online presence now growing on Stack and Tilt, and I think when I started my channel five years ago, I kind of wanted to um, help get you guys to understand the system a little bit more. Uh, hopefully that's helped, uh, but there's now backed up by a number of top instructors that are promoting the system. So you have Rob Cheney, who I work with here at Golf Tech, uh, amazing channel, I'm sure most of you watch him, along with Tom Seguto and Jess Frank, those guys, are big promoters of the system, they've worked with Andy, they've been to the camps, and I think that's really important, the guys that have actually spent time understanding the system, working with Mike and Andy, I think it makes such a, a big difference. There's also a number of top instructors uh, on Instagram, and I will include a lot of these in the comment section below so you guys can follow them. Uh, Yumi Hori Golf, who uh, works in California, she does an amazing job with her students, and I think that's one of the amazing things with the system, even though not every top player might use it as such. There's so many golfers out there at different levels, like complete beginner, um, intermediate, and more advanced players using the system and getting better every day. So Yumi does an amazing job. Uh, you've heard me mention her before. We've also got other top instructors out there, such as Bob Grissett, uh, Dave Tarashi, uh, Michael Bygrave, uh, Andreas Kelly. Um, there's a number of ones I can't think of at the top of my head right here, but so many top instructors out there that advocate the stack and tilt system. So I will put those in the comments below so you guys can follow. So what I would say, guys, is a number of top instructors, top 100 instructors in the world promoting and using the system every day. Helps golfers at every level. I'm proud to be a member of the Stack and Tilt network and help you golfers out there play better golf. So thanks for watching golfers. If you've got any more myths you want me to debunk, put them in the comments below. And I'll see you again next week for another video.